I'm Angie, and you're watching Dante's 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 Vaccinating. Showtime Sean Porter came out and stated that Errol Spence, the truth junior, is not a top three welterweight. According to Sean Porter, he feel like he's a top three welterweight. He also added Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao to the list. And of course, no other than his best friend, pound for pound number one, Terrence the Bug Crawford. He kept Errol Spence out of the list and he claimed that he beat Errol Spence. That's why he's on the list and not Errol Spence. So that being said, let's talk about it. How y'all doing, DBA Nation? I'm your host, Aki. Feel free to subscribe below if you're trying to get smarter by the minute. If you're trying to get dumber by the second, don't and listen to these decafs slash old media. However, new media in the house. Shout out to the GOAT DBN for giving me the opportunity to post on his platform. He is truly appreciated. Dante also started the new media. He the innovator of that. So if you know, you know. And if you didn't know, you better ask somebody. So make sure y'all click on the notification bell to get notified every time we post or go live on DBN. And obviously, if you're feeling generous today and you wanna show support to the Aki as well, then the link to my channel will be in the description box below. So let's go ahead and dive into the business at hand. Now, Sean Porter stating that Errol Spence is not a top three welterweight when PBC, when ESPN, when Ring Magazine, and anybody, including a baby in his mama's stomach, know that Errol Spence is the number one welterweight. And Sean Porter want to disagree because he felt like he won the Errol Spence fight. It's not a good claim, to say the least. Because if you go to court with that, you're losing that regardless of what kind of lawyers you bring into the table. Now, the reason why Sean Porter is not making a good case for himself is because even when he went on Max Kellerman on boxing, he had an interview with him, obviously, and he stated that he really lost the Kell Brook fight. He really lost the Keith Thurman fight. However, he did not lose the Errol Spence fight deep inside. At least that's how he feel. So Sean Porter is allowed to feel however he wants to feel. But one thing for sure, you have to separate emotion from logic. When you bring in facts to the table, you have to stick with that. You can't just bring your opinion and not support it with facts. Because one thing for sure, Errol Spence was more dominant than a Keith Thurman and a Kell Brook. Of course, the Kell Brook fight was more cleaner because Kell Brook held like a hundred times. However, the Keith Thurman fight on the other hand was definitely closer. And nobody managed to drop Sean Porter in a close fight. Of course, Brona dropped him, but it wasn't close. So that being said, Errol Spence managed to drop Sean Porter in a fight that he was winning eight rounds to four. So plus the knockdown, it just created that gap that it just cannot be a win for Sean Porter, regardless of how you look at it. Of course, there were some closer rounds, but you have to give it not to the A side, not to the B side, but to the one that's doing more work. The one that's landing the better punches. The one that's landing more punches. I mean, Errol Spence outlanded Sean Porter on a lot of them rounds. So if a round is close, like I said it for the thousand times, and Errol Spence lands like 25 punches, Sean Porter lands like 15 punches. Even though Sean Porter threw more punches than Errol Spence, you gotta give Errol Spence credit for his defense. So he gets that round regardless of Sean Porter performing better than he did in the previous round or better than you thought he would have performed because a lot of people had Errol Spence maybe stopping Sean Porter or just watching Sean Porter. So you have to give the round to the person that really won the round and not be emotionally attached. So of course Sean Porter has to claim he won the fight so he could get a big rematch and Errol Spence is the cash cow of the division. But when you claim Keith Thurman won the fight, when you claim Kell Brook beat you, then you can't really make a case for yourself that you won the Errol Spence fight. 
And after the fight, Sean Porter said he's not going to make excuses. But now he's saying that he won the fight. So like I said, of course, that's what you're supposed to claim. But maybe it has something to do with Errol Spence telling him before the fight that he has more dog than him. And fight night, he showed him that he had more dog than him because he fought exactly the same way he stated leading up to the fight. And that's he's going to go forward and show that he has more dog than Sean Porter. A lot of people felt that Errol Spence was capping, but there is no capping in his game because he did exactly what he told us he will do. So maybe that's why Sean Porter felt or to him, it feels more personal because Errol Spence beat him at his own game, unlike Keith Thurman, who fought his fight. So maybe it's more personal because of the trash talk leading up to the fight. And of course, we never seen Sean Porter so outspoken before. And maybe Errol Spence kind of went and challenged his manhood in a way. And of course, he was such an underdog when it ended up being a classic fight. It was a surprise to Sean Porter himself. So maybe it's all the above, but one thing for sure, Sean Porter is not making a case for himself because Errol Spence has his strap. And like he told Sean Porter right after the fight, I should get that green suit and a chain since I took your strap from you. And guess what else Errol Spence has? It's the IBF strap. The same belt that Sean Porter lost to Kell Brook in his own hometown when Kell Brook came from the UK to the US and actually beat Sean Porter. However, on the other hand, Errol Spence went to the UK and had 30,000 fans throwing brownies at him and went into the ring and knocked out Kell Brook in front of his own fans in his own hometown. And after the fight, he ate brownies that they were throwing at him just because he being petty. So, like I said, that's why Sean Porter is not making a good case for himself because the guy he lost to when he was undefeated, Kell Brook, Errol Spence knocked out. The guy, Lamont Pearson, that claimed that was going to give Errol Spence a tough fight. Errol Spence watched him. He watched Mikey Garcia as well. Then when Mikey fought Errol Spence and survived because he wasn't trying to win, he was, he was looking to survive. That gave a lot of courage to these welterweights to step into the ring with Errol Spence because a light welterweight did it. So since that was the case, Sean Porter fought him and lost his straps. And Errol Spence has the IBF and the WBC, the same straps that Sean Porter previously owned. However, he's the former champion. Errol Spence is the current champion and still undefeated and still the cash cow, and might land the Manny Pacquiao mega fight, and might land that Terrence Crawford fight if he's 100%. So that being said, the sky's the limit for Errol Spence. On the other hand, Sean Porter, he a good fighter, he's on the top five, but facts say, and I know facts, sometimes they do hurt because it's the truth. Sean Porter, had a close fight with Ugas where a lot of people felt Ugas won the fight. Sean Porter lost to Keith Thurman. Sean Porter lost to Kell Brook. So that being said, you can't be a top three welterweight when the number one guy, Errol Spitz, beat you and beat the guy that took the IBF strap from you. And that's why I said it's not a good case. And it sounds like Sean Porter is still petty from the loss and the trash talk. Uh, leading up to the fight between him and Sean and Errol Spence. I should say I'm sorry, but regardless of any of that, it still was a classic fight, the fight of the year, according to new media and us, split decision. And of course, Aki himself as well. So that being said, shout out to both. But at the end of the day, we know the truth is the number one welterweight, Terrence Crawford, is the pound for pound number one. Hopefully, that's the fight of the decade and they will clash sooner than later. That being said, drop your comments below on what Sean Porter had to say and subscribe below if you're trying to get smarter by the minute, if you're trying to get dumber by the second and don't and listen to these casual fans slash old media. And of course, if you're a casual fan and want to graduate from the IQ University, all you have to do is click on the notification bell to get notified every time we post on Split Decision. We got real life professors like Professor Nam teaching at the IQ University for free. So that being said, Tune in to Split Decision every Sunday live and hopefully one day 
uh, at the end of the year, y'all will graduate and become hardcore boxing fans. So um, appreciate everybody for tuning in and follow my man Lunatune for the funniest boxing memes. I will leave his link in the description box below. Also follow me at Aki TV on Instagram. All these links will be in the description box below, including the Aki TV merch. If you want to be dripped up like the Aki be on Split Decision, shout out to DBN, shout out to Dante for starting the new media, the future and the present and the past of boxing. And to be continued on the next episode of Aki Aki TV. Peace and we out.